Hi, in this video I'm going to explain how ST segment elevation and depression occur, particularly in um, acute MI. So I've set out on the board here a few of the things which will be very useful to remember from the start. So um, you'll recall that during depolarization, um, sodium moves into the cell and during repolarization, potassium moves out of the cell. Um, so when a cell is depolarized, it is, um, has a mainly positive charge inside the cell and a mainly negative charge outside the cell. That's the first thing you need to remember. Second thing is that in general, not always, but in general, a transmural infarct correlates to being a STEMI and a subendocardial infarct translates to being an NSTEMI. The third thing is that um, with these electrodes you see here, if um, the vector in the heart is moving towards a positive electrode, you'll get a, neg a positive deflection on the ECG um, and when the vector is moving away from the positive electrode, you'll get a negative deflection on the ECG. The fourth thing you need to remember, um, this might be slightly new information because we haven't really looked at it like this before, but um, these two theories um, which explain how ST segment elevation and depression occur um, go by diastolic diastolic current theory and the systolic current theory and so um, the diastolic current that they're talking about um, is here it's got um, the TQ interval which is effectively electrical diastole and um, the systolic part they're talking about is the QT interval which is electrical systole um, and the TQ uh, interval can be likened to phase four in the cardiac myocyte action potential. Okay, now listen up because these two theories are kind of opposite in the way they work. So um, I'm going to first tackle the diastolic current theory. Now the idea with the diastolic current theory is that when a cell becomes ischemic or injured, it becomes leaky and therefore doesn't um, repolarize as much as the other cells. So it's in a constant state of partial um, depolarization, as you can see up here. This is the normal cardiac um, action potential. And when the, ignore this part for now, um, just look at this part here, which is meant to be um, stage four. So here I've got a myocardium with the injured area or, or ischemic area here. Now as I've just mentioned, when um, the cells are ischemic, they become leaky and therefore are partially depolarized. So um, as you'll also recall from earlier, the, when the sodium comes into the cell during depolarization, it becomes more positive compared to the outside of the cell, which is more negative. Now, of course, it isn't depolarized completely, so um, the rest of the healthy myocardium is um, still more positive compared to the ischemic area. Um, remember, it's all to do with the outside of the cell and the voltages outside the cell. So, we come over here, um, which explains it in a slightly different way. Um, so the normal resting cell is very positive compared to the only slightly positive ischemic resting cell. So what happens when one area of myocardium is more positive than another is an electrical current is generated between the two areas and um, the current or vector moves in the direction of the positive, the more positive area. So you'll recall from before that when a um, vector moves towards a positive electrode, you get a positive deflection on the ECG. That's when we come over here. 
So here's what an ECG would technically look like according to the diastolic current theory when um, you get injury in the myocardium. Here is the QT interval and here is the TQ interval. So we're interested in this one. Okay, so this diagram kind of explains in a slightly different way what we've looked at over here. Um, with the diastolic theory, the vector will move from the more negative ischemic area to the more positive normal myocardium area. Um, so in this case, this is a transmural infarct, and so the sum of the vectors will be moving away from the chest leads. So you will get a negative deflection. Now I know you're thinking that in a transmural infarct, I thought we see ST elevation, that is depression. Well, um, that's the thing with this diastolic current theory, it's um, kind of confusing. Um, remember that we're talking about the TQ interval here, so the changes that you observe on the ECG will be in the TQ area. The thing is that the ECG machines that we have, um, that we use, utilise this TQ area um, as the zeroing point for the baseline. So when there is this abnormal shift in uh, the TQ area, that is translated as um, a shift in the baseline basically. So what you end up seeing is this red bit here. Um, you see ST segment elevation simply be because um, this section here has become, though it is abnormally depressed in reality, the ECG machine shows this depressed segment as the um, as the new baseline, and therefore everything else relative to the TQ segment looks elevated. So on to the systolic current theory. Um, the idea is kind of similar, but at the same time opposite. So um, I'll try and make very clear the differences between the two. Remember, we're now looking at the QT interval instead of the TQ. So the whole idea with the um, systolic current theory is that injured or ischemic cells repolarize faster than the normal cells do. Hence what you see here. So I've drawn a little diagram here for what that would look like um, uh, in the myocardium. So it's actually, as you can see, I'm sorry, it's a bit glary so you can't really see it properly, but it's actually opposite from what it would look like in the diastolic current theory. Remember, we're talking about theories, not necessarily reality. We don't know which one is actually correct, if any. So what we see here is um, the injured or ischemic myocardium is more negative on the inside and more positive on the outside because this has already repolarized, whereas um, because it's been, uh, been very fast in doing so compared to the still depolarized normal myocardium. So again, the vector, this, uh, that generates a, an electrical current and the vector moves from the more negative, the normal myocardium to the more positive on the outside um, injured cells, injured cell area and therefore we get this which as you can also see is opposite from what we see over there. Um, so here is the systolic um, current, the systolic injury current vector which is moving from the negative normal myocardium to the injured um, infarcting uh, area 
and therefore, because it is moving away from the chest leads, you get a negative deflection in the QT segment. Now with the transmural infarct, this is where it gets very confusing, especially when I'm talking about both diastolic and systolic. You can you recall with the diastolic that the main vector is moving from the ischemic area outwards. So um, therefore you get the negative deflection. However, um, what now we're talking about the systolic theory and it is moving from the normal area towards the injured area um, and therefore the main vector that you see is going outwards towards the chest leads and therefore you get ST elevation. Now I know that these two theories are pretty much opposite but the reason they both work is because they both eventually produce the same things that we see, i.e. Um, in a STEMI or transmural you see ST elevation and in a subendocardial infarct or mainly um, an N-STEMI you will see ST depression. So I hope that was helpful and you're not too confused. Um, yeah, they are only theories, so we're not exactly sure how it happens, but as you can see, they're both quite plausible and make sense to me. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching.